Welcome to the Data Product Management in Action podcast, created and executive produced by me, Scott Herleman, and brought to you by Soda, your best friend in data quality and contracts tooling. We created this podcast to serve as a place for actual practitioners bringing product management practices to data, whether that is to AI and ML, data products, platforms, or everything else in data, right? And it's to dig into the, the nitty gritty of product management in data, but in fun and dynamic conversations. It's not just lift and shift from software product management. We have a great set of hosts for you that are also practitioners, so they can really get into those specifics and, and dive deep and get you the information you want to know rather than just high level, here is what a data product is. This is about cutting through the noise of data product management to drive towards actionable insights, hence the actual podcast name, Data Product Management in Action. So sit back and enjoy another awesome conversation. Hi, this is Laconia Butler, your podcast coordinator for Data Project Management in Action. And today we are introducing you to one of our awesome hosts, Dean von Hadenbrun, CEO and co-founder of MindFuel. So Nadim, can you please give us a quick introduction to yourself and your career background? So hi, Laconia. My name is Nadim and I living in Munich, Germany. Um, I'm 36 years old and um, I started my career in the field of data and I've been uh, into data actually my entire life. So I studied business information systems with focus numerical optimization. So very hands-on if you want so. And then from that, I joined a consultancy company uh, over a decade ago, working as a data scientist, a senior data scientist. So I I really was into um, machine learning and and all these kind of things. And my career evolved over time into the direction of data strategy, means where um, I was responsible for building up data organizations, data teams. Um, within the consultancy, uh, I was working for major enterprises, Fortune 500 companies, and, and my job was to establish the data organization as a part or as an own function, if you want so. So end-to-end -end hiring people, bringing in an operating model, building up the architecture, making sure that the collaboration with the business functions should work out. And I did this for quite a while. And at a certain moment in time, I've realized that although we're doing a lot of data science, machine learning, AI use cases, and trying to solve the technical problem, these use cases were always organized as projects. And they were run as prototypes and they were run as pilots or whatever you want to call them. And back in the days, this was in 2019, then I've realized that data teams are super struggled by justifying what they do. And so by explaining what business contribution they they having and how they can help the business with their efforts. Because everyone knew these crazy data scientists are working in department B. But everyone was also asking, what the heck are they doing all the time and uh, all day long? So what is their job actually? And how do they contribute to our business? Because we are a traditional commerce enterprise and we're selling product, but uh, we don't know how data is actually contributing to this. And so I realized in 2020 that it is very difficult for data teams to explain what their outcome is. And when we talk about outcome, this is how uh, I came then into product management because my best friend and today's co-founder of MindFuel, he is a product manager and he has been super successful in the field of product management. And he back in the days explained to me then that data teams have to understand the difference between output and outcomes, which is a core principle in product management. And uh, this story took us then into the domain which we call data product management today. And this is what this podcast is all about, right? So um, we founded MindFuel. MindFuel is a data product management company. Our focus is really enabling organizations and helping them to establish a product mindset within their data teams end to end from the architecture infrastructure to classical data products or data as a product up to, uh, up to analytical products. And... Um, yeah, we're providing solutions for enabling and establishing data product management as a discipline within these. 
How do you get into the work of being a product manager in data? I started with this problem statement. The data teams are struggling with uh, with data or to justify their contribution or justifying outcome. How I personally then really started is that I worked myself as a data product manager for a while with uh, some of our clients. And so I had the chance to establish data product management um, with uh, several major organizations. And I I did it myself to learn it. So this is I, I think the the core foundation. If you wanna if you wanna elaborate on something, you you have to do it yourself first to find out how it truly works. So I I did data product management in various organizations as an external. I did both from the data product strategy, establishing data product concepts within the organization. A strategic product design means building data products or designing them, conceptualizing them. And then I work as a data product manager, really being responsible for data product. Um, in my roles, I usually have been uh, a bridge between the business teams and the data team. So I was responsible for demand management, ensuring that the, the demands business functions do have is properly understood and making sure that portfolio management is done right. So the organization is typically having a lot of data products in their in their portfolio. And uh, it's difficult for organizations or for, for functions, for business functions specifically sometimes to know what is there and how to keep overview and track of all of that. So transparency is a big topic, is a big challenge um, to, to see which availabilities and which products actually exist. And um, and my third job was a lot of value management, meaning explaining then what is the real business value or business impact from these data products and how do the data products contribute to the PL. So having a chance to to work together with the business on a if you want so lean business case and making sure that data products are facilitating this. Can you please give us a bit more information about your data product journey and current situation? Are you working in core data, the data platform, the self-service aspect? Basically, what part of product management and data are you working on? So I was working, the topic I was working on was value management. And value management is um, a discipline where you work together with the business functions to to really estimate the business value and the impact on the business on the business side of the house, really for the PL, ensuring that the data products we're providing in the data organization can be, or the outcome these data products produce can be somehow justified and also measured in the business environment. And this was my job as a data product manager in the past to make sure that. Uh, yeah, we can explain this and make this transparent in the, in the organization. That's great. And are you working on external or internal facing product? I've did both, both in my in my career in the past. Um, I've been engaged on products which were facing towards external customers. So where the platform itself has been provided for external uh, consumers, if you want so, and data products of all kinds, analytical products, uh, KPIs, dashboard, reports, machine learning models, but also data as a product has been provided to these uh, external customers. But the main focus of my work has been for internal customers. So internal stakeholders, they are consuming these data products uh, from the central data organization, or they have a hybrid model where part of us have been decentralized in the business functions with the responsibility in the functions, while um, architecture capabilities have been central remain centralized. And then also, for example, data assets or data as a products have been managed in different business functions. So long story short, I've seen both and um I think both concepts require different operating models and require different capabilities, which makes it then tricky when we want to bring data product management into action. 
Uh, I think this will be a big, big topic uh, to discuss also in the future with our guests. What do you consider big successes in your career around product management and data? My my big successes have been whenever I saw organizations really adopting the concepts of data product, where you see that the product mindset is really materializing with the organization and takes uh, takes up traction. So from an organizational perspective, the organization has been very project oriented and was wondering why outcomes are not generated. And then besides the concept of data products themselves, you establish a product mindset and out of a sudden you see that the organization is changing, the wording is changing, people are, the governance is changing and you see people really putting a product mindset at first and converting analytical use cases, if you want to, for example, into real analytical products. And I've seen this working out really successfully in a few organizations. And I have to admit, um, these organizations were not only more successful when it comes to explaining to their stakeholders why data is so important or which value contribution data had, they were also able to measure or to at least properly quantify the value contribution with value management. And I think this is something where also people who are then accountable for data or in the responsibility for data, it's super cool for them because they can grow their careers, they can explain why they're here, they're getting a seat at the table of of, of major decisions. So I also really enjoyed um, success of others and seeing them grow and seeing them, uh, seeing them being happy or like, uh, or being successful within their job, thanks to the concept of of data park management. So I'm, I'm, I'm I think this was has been my biggest success. I did this in two major organizations, uh, both in the size of Fortune 500 companies. And it, it really worked out. And so I'm really was really happy in this moment. What do you consider to be big successes in your career around product management and data? So we in the data bubbles. In the data world, people are working in this industry. We are very good when it comes to theoretical discussions, theoretical concepts, to designs, and we are good in that not only since yesterday but over decades. But I think then bringing this into practice and really making this work and executing on this uh, brings a lot of challenges sometimes which are not directly related to the topic of data. You know, people have to work differently. People have to adopt. People have to change. Uh, systems have to be extended. Um, roles and responsibilities need to be clarified, which always was a void, for example. So I think also one of my things I had to learn is just because it sounds so just because it sounds good, it works better. And uh, better knowing, better better knowing, better doing, or, or better... Oh, we have to cut that out. We have to cut that out. Uh, there's a, Actually, there's a German saying, and I wanted to translate this into English. Uh, yeah, so I think the, 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 the transformation of of the entire system brings a lot of challenges and um, I had to accept a few times in my career that it's not just done by by applying a few good ideas and then ex expect that it works out. You really have to take the people by the hand and support them and enable them and explain to them and make sure that they are feeling safe and that they're feeling good and that they that they understand why we do what we do and that they're and see the context of it and know that it creates also mutual benefit for them and the organization. And I think in the other two examples I've mentioned where I was quite successful, I think this was actually the core of the success to, uh, to bring everyone on the same page. And what's the hardest thing you've had to learn relative to data product management in your career? I think one of the hardest things I had to learn is that there's a big, gap between theory and practice. So 
Anything else you'd like our audience to know? So um, I'm, I'm really excited to, to discuss the topics about data product management and action, especially I want to learn as well. Um, although I've seen a lot, I think you can always learn something um, uh, from the exchange, from the conversations, from the discussion. And please do not hesitate to um, come up with ideas or principles or, or uh, concepts we should, we should discuss here. Um, although you're maybe not an expert, um, I'm happy to elaborate on them and, and work and find this out together and mapping these ideas and concepts maybe into something bigger, which goes beyond the real pure concept of data product management. But the most important thing is that we generate outcome for our listeners. So I'm really looking forward to that. Thanks so much for listening. Hopefully you got some great actionable insights out of this episode. We're so excited to dig deeper into data product management as many facets. If you want to engage more with the show, you can follow us on LinkedIn and check out Soda's website at soda.io for more related content around product management in data. And if you are a practitioner bringing product management practices to data and want to potentially be a guest, please check the show notes for a link to apply. And as always, we strongly encourage people from underrepresented groups in tech to apply. Much as I'm a handsome devil, we don't want all our guests only looking like me. So again, let's get excited for more digging into data product management in action.